sbagliata messa fuori c'è Pirlo 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 ancora Pirlo di Tecco tiro Hello and welcome to the Milan Talk podcast. I'm your host, Samit Paul, and with the Serie A season fast approaching, there's a lot to be discussed. Today's order of plays as follows. We'll be talking Paolo Maldini's return to the club almost 10 years on after his final game for us. There'll be transfer chat with Nikola Kalinic heading out, while Timu Bakayoko appears to be set to join us after speculation of interest in the likes of Milinkovic Savic, Kovacic, and Rabio. First, though, let's kick things off with the big news of the week, and that is, of course, Maldini's return. First and foremost, It has to be said that it's just great to have him back. Ten years have passed since he last played a game for us. That's over 900 appearances as a player, seven Serie A titles, five European Cups, many more individual accolades and trophies, and of course the reputation of being one of the classiest, most talented, um, just overall great defenders of our time. Great captain, great leader. And for him just to come home, I think that is a great move for Milan and hopefully it's one that can take us in the right direction moving forward. Things have obviously played their part in terms of the sour ending with the fans when he retired. There was a report of an icy relationship with Galliani, which prevented an earlier return. And then, of course, he did confirm that he held talks with Fasone about coming back last year. But whether it was question marks over the Chinese ownership, whether it was question marks over the role that he was set to be handed, he declined that option to come back last year. But... Things have changed this summer. He's obviously happier with the situation that the club is in and with what he's being asked to do. Uh, And now he's back. So over the moon to see that. For me, I almost feel like it's a guarantee for fans that he's willing to commit himself to this new project and Elliot and everything around the club at the moment. I think that should build confidence and belief that we're moving in the right direction with the American hedge fund. We know about their motives. They are a business. They're essentially looking to make a profit and grow the value of Milan with a three to four year plan, perhaps. But I think for here and now, if Maldini is comfortable and ready to commit to them, then I think that says a lot about what they're planning to do moving forward. So I think that's a fantastic part of it as well, beyond the fact that Maldini's back. He will have to be judged on results, of course. He hasn't got the experience of working as a director previously. He's going to be working closely with Leonardo, so hopefully that will be a good tandem between those two and a good relationship to get us moving in the right direction. But just overall, delighted to have him back at the club. I think it's been a long time coming. Um, And I just think, yeah, in terms of the general aspect of him coming back, you know, Elliot have had one hell of a summer replacing Yong Hong Lee at the top. They, you know, they've played an instrumental role in overturning our European ban. They've obviously overseen the Higuain Caldada deal. They've brought Leonardo back into an absolutely crucial role and he's doing wonders so far and now bringing Maldini back. And I think it's much more than a PR stunt. As I said just a minute ago, I think if it was anything less than a serious role where he could have a genuine influence and an impact at the club, I don't think Maldini would have taken it. So for him to sign it off, give it the green light, come back and work as part of Elliot's new look hierarchy and infrastructure, I think it says a lot about the whole system that we're building at the moment. So overall... Really, really happy about it. And uh, like I said, though, as well, we'll have to wait and see the results. I mean, can you imagine being a player coming and potentially joining Milan and you've got Leonardo and Paolo Maldini sitting across the table from you, telling you and kind of trying to convince you on why it's the best move to join Milan? I think you get that instant respect with Maldini. And I think he's going to make a massive difference in that role as well. But He has said in his press conference that he's going to be involved in various aspects and sectors, whether it be with youth, the senior team, talking to Gattuso, transfer market, all sporting areas. And I think he is going to make a good, positive influence for us. So fingers crossed it works out as planned. But for now, let's just savour the fact that he's finally back. Speaking of transfer talk, though, as well, we've got some news this week that Kalinic is looking like he's on his way out. That was six goals and six assists in 41 appearances last season. For me, I think it's best to get what we can now from Atletico Madrid and just move on. I think we're talking about a 15 million euro price tag, which is a loss on what we paid, but it's a balancing act in the sense that we can finally offload some players, whether that covers the expenditure that we've already spent already this summer, maybe that's the case to be made, or if Kalinic's sale is raising further funds to go out and get another target before the deadline. Either way, 
an exit was absolutely crucial. I think I'll hold my hands up and I'll say last summer I was in favour of the Kalinic move. I thought he would genuinely make a positive impact. Decent record in Italy with Fiorentina. Experience. Uh, he was supposed to lessen the burden on the younger players, just Catrone and, and Silva. And I thought, in terms of his overall game, aside from the goals, I thought he would be good at linking up play, dropping deep, holding the ball up, making those runs into the channels, you know, moving the defence around to, to create space for others. We didn't see any of that last season. Uh, really poor return of six goals in 41 games. And yeah, I'll, I'll hold my hands up. I'll admit it was a, a poor transfer, poor signing. Uh, and I think we're lucky, if anything, to get 15 million for him from Atletico. So who knows? Maybe he'll flourish there in Spain. He might find a different environment, a different system, and he might suit him much better. And he'll he'll show you know why Milan wanted him. But ultimately, in terms of fitting in and making the difference at Milan, wasn't working. So best to ship him out. In terms of incoming signings, we've obviously got the dream signing that is Milinkovic Savic. A lot has been said about him. There's been talk of certain strategies and ways of getting around financial fair play to kind of find an operation where we can sign him. For me, I think it's not going to happen. I don't personally think. I think we're looking at a player, a very, very talented player. I think he warrants the hype. I think he's got the physicality, the agility, the kind of presence in midfield to defend. He's got an eye for goal. He's creative. And at 23, I think he's only going to get better and better. So there is a genuine argument for me to say that, yes, we should go all out and go for quality over quantity. Whether he's worth the touted 150 million euros is another question. I think that's well over the top. But in today's market, if there are Premier League sides willing to pay that, for example, then that's just the way that it's been dictated and that's what we're going to have to spend. But I think he is the real deal. He will become the real deal. Um, But for me... If we're looking at financial fair play, I just don't see how we're going to be able to do something like that. I think Leonardo hinted at it in his press conference as well when he unveiled Maldini that it is a dream. It's unlikely. It's unrealistic. Whether these this talk of paying a 30 million euro loan deal first and then paying the rest with an option to buy next season, maybe that gets around the financial fair play aspect, but it's a risk as well, isn't it? I mean, you know, we're talking about a player... If we do do that, then what if he doesn't produce next season? And then we're looking at a player that was overhyped and we're having to spend a bucket load of money on him. I think it's a risk. So for me, I think we're better off looking at other targets. And then if we get back into the Champions League next season, then that is obviously going to put us in a stronger position to go out and buy the the big names and the high quality players. So I think we're probably going to end up delaying that, provided he's still on the market next summer. Um, Rabio and Kovacic have been two other names that have been linked. But again, Rabio, I don't think PSG are interested in letting him go. Contract expires next summer. So that's obviously sparked talk of an exit. But he's a, he's a quality player, technically brilliant. I do find that he kind of gives away possession in very dangerous positions a lot. So from that aspect, if he's going to play in a deeper creative role, I'm not too sure he's the most sensible of signings. But... As I said, I think PSG are pretty determined to hold on to him, so I'm not sure that's going to happen. And then Kovacic did seem like it was an option, but again, firstly and foremost, very important. I think Chelsea are looking like they're going to snap him up on loan. But also on top of that, I think, again, that the price and the price tag comes back into it again. Is he really worth the money that they're talking about, the 50, 60 million euros? For me, no, but very creative, a very technically good footballer, and I think he would be exactly what we're looking for in midfield. So... Again, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Chelsea seem to be the likely destination there. That does leave us then with um, Timu Bakayoko. Obviously, he's coming, he's coming off a very, very poor season with Chelsea. We all saw him for Monaco, that Champions League run, and obviously helping to the Liga title. Very good player, but when asked to make that step up in England, he definitely didn't deliver last season. But I'm just wondering whether or not a move to Italy could suit him. The slower tempo in Serie A, I think, may be a defining factor. Um, I think it could see him impress again. And with that kind of physicality, the tenacity, the ability to kind of make things tick in front of the defence, I think he'd be a great option to have as a vice Kessie. We desperately need someone to do that role. Can't afford to run Kessie into the ground again like we did last season. And I do think that Bakayoko could be a viable option. Again, it's going to be a loan with an option to buy, according to all reports, talk today of a 30 million euro price tag at the end of it again I'd probably say that's a bit too high but 
We do need someone to come in in the midfield position and do that role. Um, and if it's Bakayoko, I don't think we should complain too much. And just judge him on performances if he does join, really. I think it is a, a sensible sort of addition if it does get made. Also did a bit of research, got a bit of a player scout mission from my mate Lewis, who's a Chelsea fan, at Leroy Scribbles at, on Twitter. Um, just kind of get a better idea of someone that's seen Bakayoko a lot last season. And for him, he came out with the negatives and positives. Um, negatives included getting dispossessed a lot, poor first touch, and often tries to do too much with the ball, can't really shoot. So that uh, doesn't sound too great so far, but positives. Shields the ball well, athletic, recycles the ball well in front of the back four, if playing in a deeper role. And of course, he's still young, so he's got a lot of improvement and maturity and development still left in him. So again, it is a 50-50 one. He could end up being a bust, but you do have to wonder whether a season with Gattuso getting the best out of him perhaps might be a sensible addition. So again, we'll have to wait and see whether or not that is completed or we move elsewhere. But the midfield certainly needs a fresh face. Uh, and if it's Bakayoko, I think it's it's a, it's a step in the right direction for us. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. On to your Twitter questions. And there's a few, so I appreciate all of them that came in. At Borry Canes, where do we go from here? There are rumours that Everton is going to sign Bernard. For a top four finish, do you think Milinkovic Savage is worth paying the 120 million euros? Keeping in mind that if we get back to the Champions League, we can attract better players. Agreed in terms of if we get back into the Champions League this season, we can definitely go for the top tier players next year. So there is a potential balancing act between going all out this season within the powers that we have in terms of financial fair play and potentially just being sensible, getting the players that we need in to address the weaknesses getting back into the top four and then really kicking on. Um, Bernard, I'm not, I was never really convinced about him. Yes, he ticks the right boxes in terms of being a pacey winger. He's got a bit of skill about him and eye for goal. So there were positives, but, and again as well on a free transfer. But for me, kind of looked like it was just a, a quick fire solution to a very big problem. So I'd prefer it if we moved elsewhere and looked for a proper winger with pace that can definitely make a big difference for next season so I'm not too disappointed about that but for a top four finish do you think Milinkovic Savage is worth paying that money 120 million euros I personally just don't feel as though it's a realistic option you know we can talk about structuring it differently and potentially finding a loophole but for me it's just not going to happen if it does happen then and it's, it's an option to go for that top four I almost think you have to take that opportunity if it presents itself. He's not shy of, he's not short of interest. Juventus, Man United, Real Madrid, all these clubs link with him. So if the option's there and the possibility is there to kind of prize him away, then I'd put all in the eggs in one basket and go for it. But again, we'll have to wait and see whether or not that happens. At Jmart 2075, will the podcast be on iTunes? Uh, it will be. I'm just kind of focusing on YouTube at the moment. I want to kind of build that platform on there and then uh, we'll see. But hopefully I will try and bring it back um, to iTunes for you. At Rashab Dabari, glad Maldini is back. It's more making a point than any actual changes he'll bring to the Mercato this summer. Bye-bye Kalinic. I said he looked a flop from day one. You said otherwise. I wish I'd been wrong. I think we need to sell first. And so if I was Leonardo, get on that. Agreed. Maldini, glad to see him back. Um, Bal- Kalinic on his way out, I guess, as I admitted earlier, definitely thought he would be a good signing, but 100% was the complete opposite. So, yeah, I think uh, seeing him go is a positive. Uh, And yeah, agreed, we do have to offload a few more players to uh, continue our transfer recruitment push this summer. Uh, Rishab adds, I think if we're getting back a Yoko, it's bye-bye Bertolacci. Gomez is also gone, I hope Baka joins the list in the next few days, only because I still believe in Andre Silva. I think he has talent and he should stay and fight with Catrone. Uh, I literally cannot disagree with anything you've said there. Uh, Bertolacci, for me, never been sold on him, I think. I think I've mentioned in previous podcasts, I think his game has just been out. It's just outdated. I think the game, the, the game itself has gone way beyond what he offers. He's too slow. He's too pedestrian. Okay, he's technically technically gifted and he can do a job. But for me, he just doesn't have the kind of physicality and movement required, the mobility required to really dominate a midfield battle. So for me, he's got to go. Gomez is gone. I think that's best for all parties, considering his lack of football. And yeah, agreed. Backer goes and will keep Silva. I think you have to have three top strikers in your squad. Backer's made no secret of the fact that he wants to go back to Spain. So let's just give him what he wants, get some money in 
keep Silva, Catrone, battling Higuain for that top spot up front. And I think that's a really good trident, that trio to have to kind of push Catuso and uh, keep them things fresh and rotate. Uh, Rishab also adds we should look to also sell Antonelli. Agreed. We're covered at left back with Ricardo Rodriguez and Strinich and Calabria if need be, get him off our wage budget. I uh, hope we come to a compromise with Montelivo too and we get his wages off our bill. That's all for departures. In terms of incoming, we need a winger first. I know Milinkovic Savage sounds nice and believe me, I'd love him, but we need a pacey left winger. I thought Bernard looked promising, but he seems to be on the way to the Premier League. We have been linked with Draxler, Lozano and Martial. Draxler is too slow, Martial is too risky and Lozano is perfect. If Depay is not possible, then I would go for this kid. He's quick, good with the ball, cuts in like a demon. He was by far Mexico's best player at the World Cup and could be a very well could very well be a star for Milan in the future. Also would be okay with Martial at the right amount of money. Again, Rashab, I can't really disagree with anything you said. I think Antonelli has to go, yes. I think we're well covered at left back now. We don't really need him. Uh, and agreed with Montalivo. I think we left him off the tour in the US with rumours suggesting that he's not part of the technical project. So again, for me, especially if we bring in another midfielder, perhaps two, you're talking about Biglia, Kessie, Bakayoko, Locatelli, Jose Mari made a very impressive impact during the International Champions Cup. So whether or not he's pushed up the pecking order remains to be seen. You've obviously got Jack as well. I don't really see what Montalivo offers this team anymore. So he should really go if we can get rid of him, that is. Um, Pacey Winger, absolutely agree. I think that has to be a priority. Um, I do like your options. Draxler as well is too slow, agreed with that. Martial, I don't see him coming to Milan, to be honest. But if we can get him, that's fine. And Lozano, yeah, I don't know why. I think he was a man in demand, wasn't he, at the beginning of the summer, kind of around the World Cup as well. But that seems to have gone quiet all of a sudden. I mean, Memphis Depay would be a dream. I think that would be a great signing for us, especially after his bounce back season at Lyon last year. But whether or not that's uh, an option anymore, considering it's gone so quiet as well, I think um, that might be more wishful thinking as well. But yeah, agreed, definitely left, left winger needs needed. Um, let's just see if we uh, get one in before the de deadline. At the Milanese, the 11, I don't think Milinkovic Savic is realistic at all considering our current position with FFP. The only way it would work would be a loan with an option to buy, which Lazio would never accept. It would be like saying, we'll take your world class player and maybe pay you later. An obligation to buy would be the only way Lazio would allow us to take him. But even then, what if he turns out to be a flop? We'd end up needing to pay at least 120 million euros next summer. We may not even be in the Champions League. What would the consequences be of that? Milanese, the 11, completely echo all your points. Uh, you know, I kind of hinted at the same reasoning as well earlier why we probably won't and shouldn't go for Milinkovic Savic this summer I think again I will reiterate that I think if it does emerge as a genuine option I think we have to explore it and we should try to go for him but yes they're gonna have to be very very sensible they're gonna have to convince Claudio Lotito about it who's you know a traditional got a reputation for running a hard bargain so for me it just doesn't seem realistic or genuine at all but We'll have to wait and see. I think um, it's a risk as well, like you mentioned. You know, if we don't get Champions League football, he doesn't deliver as expected, then it could turn out to be a very, very expensive mistake. So maybe one more season at Lazio. Let's see him develop and prove himself again. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the other clubs don't swoop in for him and then we may have a shot at him next summer. But um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. At Borry Canes, if we need a defensive midfielder, I'd rather go for Moussa Dembele. Although I think Dick Bakayoko will be groomed well by Catuso. Our priority should be in the attack though. I think our defence is good enough. Kovacic would be a good add. If our attack is good, we don't need to defend. Agreed. I think Moussa Dembele is another name that's been linked and touted with not only Milan, but a couple of other clubs this summer. I think he would be a solid option. I think he's been slightly injury prone at Tottenham, so that might be a factor in maybe perhaps not going for him, but certainly would tick the right boxes for what we need. But yeah, I agree. I think Gattuso might have a very positive impact on Bakayoko, provided he comes with the right mentality and attitude. I think he could um, flourish under Gattuso. So that would be an interesting kind of subplot. But yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I think we need a bit more creative class, a bit more technical quality in the midfield, and Kovacic would be the man. So if only we could have pulled that one off. It doesn't look likely now. But yeah, that would have been my ideal addition in terms of price tags and what's necessary and required in our squad as well. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. At G Chimwanja, I think we should look elsewhere, have Hakan play more central and get Martial from Man United. Bakioko a place to put himself together for now. Milan should not be the place to do that. Remember, Pasalic, loan from Chelsea, never works out. Martial might also go cheaper. Agree to an extent. I think Martial 
would probably would be cheaper than some of the other options that could be touted to sort out that wing position. But I still don't see him, if he has got that level of interest in him this summer from Chelsea and other Premier League sides, that he'd end up coming to Milan. I just can't see that happening for me. Um, again, you know, we could promise him a prominent role, a regular place in the starting lineup. That maybe that might be a crucial factor in it. But yeah, I'm not too sure I can see that one happening. Um, and yeah, I think, again, it's going to be 50-50 on Bakayoko. I think opinions are split. I do think he can be a useful addition to kind of push Kessie on as well to give him some competition to stay on his game. But agreed, it's not the ideal kind of scenario and addition that I'd probably go for. But if it's the one that we do end up going for, then uh, I'll accept it. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if whether or not he can uh, rediscover his best form for us. At Mr. GL, I think Bakayoko is the best option in midfield because of his value and upside. Milinkovic Savage is complete pipe dream. Um, agreed, Moz. I have to say that, yeah, in terms of value and upside, I think Bakioko, coming off a bad season, will want to prove himself at the top level again. Has the characteristics that we kind of need to solidify that midfield up as well. So I think he probably would be a decent option. And yeah, Milinkovic Savage, like I mentioned, he is an absolute pipe dream at this point. I think, you know, Leonardo can kind of tease us a little bit, maybe leave the door slightly adjust to suggest that it's an option, but I don't think it's realistic and I think they know it as well for this summer at least, so can't see that one happening. Uh, a few questions from Moz. Number one, as an ESPN contributor, what are your thoughts on the TV deal? I, I would love it if they're willing to invest in marketing and on-air talent the way NBC has. So Moz, I'm not really familiar with the situation in the US. Obviously in the UK we've finally just got news that 11 sports have snapped up this area rights for the next three years and they're launching an online platform which roughly will show about three or four games a weekend from Serie A, I think, which is ideal as long as they show all the Milan games. I'll be happy. But, I mean, yeah, for me, from an ESPN point of view, I think it's great news for them to snap it up. I think it will hopefully draw more interest and more influence towards the site. Um, but only if they, you know, they've got to do it properly. I think Serie A deserves it. It's one of the major leagues in Europe. And I think it deserves the right appropriate marketing and the level of kind of investment to make it a proper setup rather than having it half-hearted and kind of almost disappointingly last season we in England we didn't have any pre-game post-match analysis at all we literally cut from the programming literally cut straight to the stadium quick run through of the lineups and then straight into the game almost with some highlights from the last game so kind of doing it like that doesn't really appeal so for me hopefully like I said I think ESPN they know what they're doing I've done it elsewhere at the other sports and uh, fingers crossed they can give Serie A the right coverage and platform for its flourish in America. So hopefully you get to enjoy enjoy that this season. Uh, question two, did we keep any of the deals Yong Hong Lee established in China? I genuinely don't think we did. Milan China doesn't seem to exist anymore considering it's the, the official site or Twitter handle. Nothing's been mentioned of it. I believe question marks were raised about our supposed deal that we made with one of the Chinese clubs out there that just looks like it never happened officially um, so yeah I don't really see the benefit of what actually happened with Milan China whether it still runs even though the ownership has gone I imagine not because that was probably Yong Hong Lee and Han Lee's kind of um, setup that they wanted but um, yeah I think all those deals are, are out the window and uh, we're moving on to the um, Elliot's management and ideas from this point onwards Question three, I could care less about Lee. I just think China is still an important untapped market. I do agree with that. I genuinely think that we could still do a lot in terms of commercial business um, and you know raise the profile and uh, tap into that market. I agree with you there. And I think Leonardo seems to be more than just a sporting head that we've had, that we can have in that role. I think he knows the business very well as well. He's had obviously key roles with Milan, PSG in the, in the past aside from his coaching career and playing career, of course. So I think he should be aware of that and hopefully he will look to tap into that, whether or not that's the job of the CEO coming in. If Gazidis, like you mentioned in your next question as well, if Gazidis comes in, what will be his biggest impact? Too many cooks, directors in the kitchen. I think there's a lot going on. I think Scaroni, president, Leonardo, sporting director, Maldini, strategic development manager, director, there's obviously several other officials running about the place as well doing jobs. It does seem a bit overkill. I think there needs to be a balance and a clear definition of what everybody's supposed to be doing. But I think Gazidis, more than anybody else, will probably come in 
if he does arrive and he will look to that kind of Chinese market and US market, Australian market, various places that we could definitely do more. And I think given the work that he's done at Arsenal, I think he could be the man and that's why he's been linked with the club. I think he could make a massive difference. So let's see what he does on the commercial side if he does arrive. Uh, another question from Moz, who scores more this season, Cristiano Ronaldo or Gonzalo Higuain? That is a tough one, Moz, got to admit. Uh, I'm going to go with Higuain purely for the fact that I think that he is going to be the main talisman that we have. Everything is going to run with the idea of him up top finishing things off for us. Yes, Shalanoli will chip in, Suso will chip in, Jack will chip in, other players will have their contributions, but we are looking for a striker that can score 15 to 20 goals minimum next season. Higuain's proven himself in Italy. I think it's 146 goals in 251 games since he moved to Italy. I think he will bag a lot of goals. That's not to say Ronaldo won't, but combined with the Champions League kind of emphasis that Juventus will place on next season, you know, they've also got the likes of Costa, Dybala, Cuadrado, Mandzukic, Bernadeschi. They've got so many other attacking options that everybody's going to have to kind of share the load. I think Ronaldo will get a huge bulk of those goals and he will be a success for them but I'm backing our new boy to get the job done and I think he'll get them all goals so let's see uh, that actually happens and then final question when did you become a Milan fan this is a bit different Moz appreciate this one um can't quite put an exact age on it I'd probably say around seven or eight um in the UK uh channel four is uh, one of the terrestrial channels used to be massive on Italian football in the 1990s um so in the early 90s, they used to show a lot of the Italian football on a Sunday afternoon, the two o'clock kickoff games. Completely fell in love with it. Obviously, at that time, the best players were all in Italy. You had the atmosphere and the colour in the stadiums. Uh, it just seemed to be the cool league at that time. Kind of drew me away from the local team that I support. Uh, and yeah, and the first team that I specifically remember, the red and black, was Milan. Uh, and from that point onwards, I followed them for a number of years when I was younger. You know, seems to be the only person who didn't watch English football in my school class, but followed them for a number of years, continued that even though the Italian rights got passed around from various networks and then eventually became a job. So fortunately enough, I've uh, managed to be able to continue to write and talk about Serie A and Milan for the last eight or nine years now. So yeah, that's my story. Uh, it'd be uh, good to actually have maybe a pod focused on that in the future, see how everyone else became a Milan fan. But cheers for those questions, Mars. Really appreciate it. A few of you kind of have jokingly suggested that you're sending too many questions in. Never. Always keep sending those questions in. Really do appreciate it and love the engagement that I get from you guys on social media and on the pod. So keep them coming in. Right, guys, that's a wrap for this pod. Thanks all for listening. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Keep listening. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Milan Talk one uh, Next week, we'll have a season preview, of course, with the game against Genoa fast approaching. Talk a bit more transfer talk as well, if any big deals get done between then and now. Um, but yeah, much more to come from the Milan Talk podcast this season. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it as always. And Forza Milan.